My art is slightly unusual because although I create it all on land, uh, most of it is installed underwater and actually transforms into artificial reefs. My name is Jason DeCarries Taylor and I'm a sculptor. I think what's interesting for me about these installations um, is they, they touch on many different things. So not only is it about the art, the, the ecology, culture, it's also about science and about telling stories that relate to our planet. I think I've always had a pretty good connection to the ocean. I was very fortunate to have grown up in various parts of the world and been very fortunate to explore some incredible underwater habitats. In particular, you know, two thirds of our planet is, is covered in water. Uh, so I've got a hell of a lot to explore. I think it's a, you know, a bit of a cliche to say we're, we're living in unprecedented times, but the reality is we are, and our oceans are dramatically changing. They're affected by many different fronts. Ecosystems are collapsing, uh, coral reefs are in serious peril. Um, even the pH of our oceans and bodies of water are changing and they're becoming more acidic, which is having devastating effects on, on marine life. Art has the ability to tell stories. And I think, you know, we understand the world through stories. You know, we've seen, although the science is so glaringly obvious and, and, and so critically important, you know, we're inflicting incredible damage on this planet, but yet we're really slow to react. And I think the artists play a really crucial role in, in combining the science into a message that's both emotional and, and makes you feel connected to the issue. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's of grave importance that we really address what's happening. There's many different steps to creating underwater art. Um, most of the projects can last between one year to five years. First of all, I like to make sure that there's a very um, deep uh, environmental impact analysis of the site. And we do that in conjunction with the local marine department um, and a team of biologists to ensure that uh, everything is done in, in the correct way. Um, and I also like the artworks to connect to the community um, where they're placed. So it's very important to understand the, the culture where they're going to be installed and speak to people and, and hear their stories from that area. So most of the models that I use for the sculptures are local residents um, and I capture them in a variety of means either by scanning them with a digital scanner um, or I use a very traditional technique where I take plaster impressions of them. From those initial impressions I then take a series of moulds. Those moulds are then replicated in a, in a special type of marine cement. This is my daughter. Is it really? Roped into casting. And then once I get that cement, I have to sand it down, polish it, grind it, make lots of different types of nooks and crannies for marine life to inhabit, and then also add um, large foundations. All these works get lowered into the sea using a, a large crane. And then when they're on the seabed, we actually connect them into the substrate. And they're designed to last for sort of hundreds of years, so we have to ensure that they're you know, resilient to hurricanes and cyclones and, and strong oceanic forces. And then sort of nature takes over from that point, and each one of the sculptures goes through a series of processes where they, a thin layer of algae starts to adhere. Then you get some uh, more solid invertebrates that come along and, and colonize the surface. You then get hard, soft corals, uh, all different types of marine life moving in. And then it, it just carries on evolving. So I, I never actually feel like they're, they're fully finished. Um, they're, they're just um, always in a series of, of processes. And I think one of the most in incredible moments for me, you know, producing the works in the studio is obviously, you know, very interesting, uh, but it's only when I actually return and see the works being colonized and inundated by the marine environment that you know, everything finally makes sense. And we talk about man versus nature and, and the two things are separate when I think we tend to forget that we are nature, we are part of this world, we are part of this ecosystem, 
and we have to find a better way to, to live together. And I hope my works kind of sometimes provide a metaphor for that. These are actually the fun days, pouring like metal. Most of it's just mixing cement and... Yeah. Arguing with... Hamilton people. <laughs>